Well, hey, everybody, it's Monday, it's 3 p.m., and it is time for dinner with Nanny Bubby. So happy to be here. I miss you on Friday. We had our live Channel 8 show on Friday, and that was absolutely amazing. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that, but first I'm going to tell you what we're making today. So I had so many of you reach out to me to tell me that you wanted that recipe for the double tomato crostini that I made with my student last Tuesday. And I did post the recipe and gather. So for those of you who want to find that double tomato crostini recipe, hey mom, how are you? It is in the gather group right now. But what I did with that recipe after making it on Tuesday is, hey, El Hi hey Ellen Setliff, how are you? Welcome to Monday, we're back. What I did with the double tomato Christini recipe is I had the double tomato left over and I had some beautiful swordfish that I was going to cook that night for dinner. And what I did is I took that, that juices that we were putting on the crostini and I put it on the swordfish with a little bit of pico de gallo and some salsa mixed into it. And it was absolutely delicious. And so I was so excited when that happened that I wanted to make it for you guys today. So that's what we're doing today. Let me just turn this down. I have heated up this pan because what I wanna do is toast the pine nuts for you and for all of us here in the house who are gonna be eating this. And you can tell when anything is toasted that you're doing in a pan because you can smell it. And I'm just starting to taste these pine nuts, or not taste, but smell these pine nuts. And little by little by little, they'll start to turn a beautiful golden brown. And then when they do, we're going to know that they're done. But boy, these are coming very, very quickly to a very warm sense because you've got to let your nose be your guide when it comes to cooking. First, we eat with our eyes. Then we eat with our nose. Or sometimes when we walk in the door, we smell something and we start eating with our nose, then with our eyes, and then finally with our mouth. So this is what we're doing is toasting these pine nuts. I can already smell them, but there are so many in here that I really have to just kind of toss them and get them around so we get through to all the, the pine nuts. There we go. So on Friday on Channel 8, I was so thrilled because I was able to make the Mahamara recipe that Yotam Odolangi has done in his master class. I now have made it five times. And I think I finally mastered it. I just had to keep making it and making it and making it until I actually finally felt very, very secure with that recipe. And I had to make it three different times for Channel 8 because you need to show the beginning. I think these are very nicely toasted because you need to show the beginning, the middle, and the end. And so um, I had then made it three different times just for Channel 8. And of course, I made it two times on my own. So I felt very satisfied with how that turned out. It is a very laborious recipe that I didn't think I'd be able to get done in five minutes, but we had it figured out just perfectly and it, it we did come to, to getting it done. And so I'm very, very pleased with that. So this is the beautiful halibut. If you wanna see this, it's been patted dry. I leave the skin on on the back because I like the skin on the grill so that it doesn't turn, um, uh, take off the meat. It just uh, uses the, the skin to continue to cook. Hey there, Teresa, how are you? So we're going to take a little bit of olive oil and instead of brushing this with olive oil, I'm going to take uh, a spray because it, it just, this is empty, so it's a good thing I brought another one. Uh, so I brought the spray can and we're just gonna spray a little bit because it sprays so much more evenly. Uh, what, then when you brush it and we're going to put a little bit of salt and pepper right on this and we're going to let these flavors sort of meld in just a little bit on the halibut there we go Let's, a little bit of salt again you've heard me say this a dozen times but the higher up you are the more control that you have so there we go I'll tell you last week Facebook changed its program and its platform and I was unable to flip the nanny bubby so that you could read it. So it was reading backwards and that happened last Monday and it lasted all week long. I was so frustrated. And I have to tell you when I just popped on to set up 
for the show. And I looked and the tool was there so that you would be able to flip back to the regular nanny bubby. I almost, I almost had a party and a celebration all by myself. It was really quite something. So anyway, here is the fish all um, seasoned and ready to go. So let's start right now by making the uh, double tomato mixture. So we've got right here these, let me just kind of push you back a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. Did you guys have a good weekend? Tell me what you did this weekend. Anybody have anything fabulous that they did or uh, that they were working on? I'm gonna take these, these tomatoes and I'm just going to, oh my gosh, almost like chiffonading them, honestly. I know it's not the same technique, but it's, it's almost like dicing these tomatoes. And you know, this original recipe, hey, Lisa Dell, uh, this, Lisa, I popped that check in the mail to you for your fundraiser. I just wanted to tell you that. So you certainly should have it before Saturday. I was worried that I wouldn't have it um, in time uh, to see Harmony. So I just wanted you to know, happy to support your fundraiser. Lisa, I'm going to tell all of you this. Lisa is, um, want to do a lasagna party? Sure. Oh, you went to a lasagna party. That's awesome. That's awesome. So tell us what you do at a lasagna party. Um, but I do want to tell everybody, Lisa is having a fundraiser for a New York um, performer who obviously the New York performers have been shut down for months. I mean, not only months now, for a year or more. And so a lot of these young performers are traveling throughout the country and people that love the arts and love um, everything are supporting them with fundraisers uh, so that they can have some form of income and continue to hold out and not have to become waiters and waitresses in restaurants that were not actually open anyway. You know, years ago, a starving young actor could work as a waiter or waitress until they got a big break, but they couldn't even do that. So um, I'm sure they were driving for Uber or whatever else just to make it. But um, anyway, this particular performer, um, Lisa happens to know from New York and my cosmetologist here in town, dermatologist actually, um, had a fundraiser for him as well. And it's very interesting that Lisa was having one as well too. So kudos to Lisa for helping out young performing actors and actresses. And so Teresa, tell me, what is a lasagna party? Does everybody bring a different lasagna or how does that work? So type that in. So these are the pine nuts, they're already toasted. And again, when you're toasting nuts, mm, let your nose be your guide. The minute you can start smelling them, you know that they're toasted. So all of them are not toasted, but many of them are. It's like when you put garlic into a pan, you know that it's time to take it off the fire. The minute you can smell the garlic, off the heat, off the heat we go. So I've just chopped up these sun-dried tomatoes, and now we're gonna start with the regular tomatoes. Okay, Teresa's gonna be writing very soon about what you do at a lasagna party. Okay, so into my very favorite kitchen tool, guys, right? You've heard me talk about this a dozen times. There we go. These tomatoes are so sweet um, and so delicious. So there we go. These are organic pear, little tiny pear tomatoes. Now, if I were putting these on top of the crostini, I would actually dice these a little bit more to make them smaller. But because they're going to be going on top of the fish, I feel like a little bit of a chunkier feel to these would be just fine. Okay, there we go. And one more dip of these. Okay, let me see. And Lisa said, I took the kids to Calabunga uh, Bay, exhausted. <laughs> I guess, I guess. I, I'm not sure I would go to Calabunga Bay right now just because I would be freezing. Oh my gosh, it was so cold yesterday. I don't know what it was like up in Reno, Teresa, but my God, it was freezing down here. Okay, there we go. Okay. Tomatoes all done. We're going to take the sun-dried tomatoes and we're going to put them in the bowl with these. And this is why it's called a double tomato. Now, this is the thing about this is that initially 
these tomatoes were soaked in a boiling water for about five minutes or really, really scalding hot water for about five minutes. And then they would rehydrate. And then you were told to dice them. But what I have found over the years is that sitting in the olive oil, sitting in the vinegar, sitting in there with the seasonings, that it they just they hydrate just naturally. So let me just give these little hands a quick wipe, a quick rinse, and um, I will be, I'm coming right back. Okay. All right. So Teresa says, let me see here. A neighbor uh, flew in a friend from LA whose specialty is lasagna. I think it was just um, just an excuse for a party. She made a beautiful charcuterie board and salad and lasagna apparently. So how fun is that? Oh my gosh. Was it as delicious as you were told that it was going to be? I'd really like to know. Okay. So from here, we have anybody else do anything fabulous over the weekend? We've got um, Cowabunga Bay. Oh, my God. Um, I loved Der Stuka when we used to go to Wet n Wild. That was my favorite ride. Um, we've got a lasagna party. I worked on a script all weekend and took a long nap on Saturday because I was so exhausted from making that recipe. Um, oh, no, you've had better. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Well, you're a good cook, Teresa. I know you are, so probably you could make a better one. Um, I worked on a script and took a long nap on Saturday, which felt absolutely fantabulous. And Sunday continued working on it. And then the kids all came over, which was lots of fun. Lots and lots of fun. Okay. Um, but on Sundays, they tend not to come and eat. So we've got the tomatoes. We've got the sun-dried tomatoes. We've got about a half a cup of olive oil to hydrate everything. Here we go. That's about a half a cup. There we go. And so you can see that these sun-dried tomatoes didn't necessarily need to be soaked because they're going to sit in this and they are going to get hydrated. I'm going to put in a little bit of salt. There we go, about a teaspoon there. And pepper. I forgot to pull out the red wine vinegar, so you'll excuse me while I do that. So let me go do that. In fact, I'm going to get some pomegranate wine vinegar because I want to give this just a little bit of sweetness. So hold on for me just one minute. Okay, I know you guys can still hear me. And I am looking for, let me see here. I cannot find it. I feel like I must have used it up. Yep, nope, here it is. Okay. So this is from the Temecula Olive Oil Company, and it's pomegranate red wine vinegar. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in. Now, interestingly enough, I am going to be adding salsa to this recipe. So it's going to go, we're going to be mixing cultures here, and we are going to be adding salsa to a very Italian recipe here. And that's really what gave it such amazing flavor um, the other day when I made this recipe. It was just absolutely incredible. Okay, so here we go. Everything is marinating right here in this little bowl. And what we're doing is this recipe calls for smoked mozzarella. So let me tell you about smoked mozzarella. You can find it, but you cannot find it shredded. You can only find it in bricks. And if you take it to your cheese person at whatever market you're at and say, could you please grate this on your machine? The first thing they're going to say to you is not really. We can't do it because um, it's a soft cheese and it's very hard to shred. So I'm not sure how they shred it before we get it out of these packages um, in the market. But shredding your own cheese. So I bought the bricks years ago. I would buy the bricks and I would bring them home and I would try to shred them myself and they would just fall into little balls and turn into balls in the shredder in the food processor. And so I thought there has to be a better way I can deal with this. And this is what I realized. I love the smoked flavor. I thought the smoked flavor was amazing. But there's other ways to get the smoked flavor. And I absolutely love and adore this hickory smoked Temecula olive oil um, oil. And what I did when I made this the other day is I just took this and I put about, oops, that's a little bit too much. 
about a tablespoon of olive oil and I poured it over the mozzarella, which is absolutely phenomenal. And this gave that mozzarella that smoked flavor. And then from there, let me get another bowl for my husband here. Oh. So he is working very hard to not do dairy and I need another spoon. So I am not going to contaminate this for him with the dairy. This is just gonna be for Russell and me. Okay, so we'll put use that to go on top of his halibut. I'll put that right over there. And I'm gonna take this mozzarella right here and I'm going to put it right into the mixture. There we go. So we're gonna set this aside and all the oils and all the vinegar and everything that is in this is all going to just kind of meld together. You can smell that smoky flavor. We're gonna take our pine nuts and put about half of them in here. There we go. We're gonna use the others to kind of sprinkle on top of the fish as a garnish. So this too absorbs the oil. Oh, you can smell those pine nuts, absolutely divine. And this is then, if you had this mixture, the next thing that you are gonna do, let me just set this over here. We're gonna chiffon on some basil, of course, but at this point, once you get the basil in here, if we were making the crostini, for those of you who are really interested in getting that crostini recipe, is we would put some ricotta cheese on top of the crostini bread, and we would then sprinkle this on top with the basil, and that's how you would serve it. But because we are doing this on top of the fish and we're gonna be adding the salsa, this is where we're stopping and now we're gonna make a very big departure in the way that we're gonna to continue to prepare this. So let me just do this. Okay, I saw someone type something in there, so let me see. Um, ordered basil olive oil from Temecula, yeah. And, and that smoke one sounds so good. Yes, it's absolutely amazing. And let me tell you what else is fantastic. The grapefruit olive oil is fantastic. The lime flavored olive oil is fantastic. And the hatch chili vinegar, you can't imagine that hatch chili vinegar would be great on a salad, but it is divine. And you do that, there's a jalapeno olive oil and you think, oh my gosh, that's gonna be too spicy on a salad, but it's not. It's divine, but you also can take that hatch chili vinegar and put it either into the lime vinegar or the grapefruit vinegar. It's just absolutely fantastic. So as you can see, there's the, the basil in here and I will put more basil in Tom's after in just a few minutes. But now we're gonna take this salsa and we're just going to take about a tablespoon or two of the salsa which this just really ramps up the flavor. It just adds a layer of texture and flavor to this that just on top of fish absolutely is um, fantastic. So let me just mix this together. Okay, there you go. Now also if you have pico de gallo, that's also a really great thing to put on here because the pico de gallo with the onions and the tomatoes, it just adds just another layer and it just, there it is. So we're gonna set this aside, let everything marinate. And as I said, you can see that these sun-dried tomatoes are starting to plump up right now, which is really absolutely fantastic. So before I heat up for the fish, I just wanna tell you, on Wednesday, I have a young lady who is nine years old. Her name is Hadar Kadem. Hadar Kadem, and she's nine years old and she's a baker. And recently she did a baking cheesecake class online and she had about 25 people join her cooking class. Can you imagine? And she taught them all how to make cheesecake, which was unbelievable to hear. Well, I reached out to her grandmother because that was the only contact I knew, somebody who knew somebody who knew her grandmother we're all just two degrees of separation from everybody in this world. And the grandmother gave me to her son and her son was uh, Hadar's father. 
And I invited Hadar to be my guest this week as my interview on Wednesday. So she's doing Wednesday for two reasons, because I am going to a wedding in Park City and we are leaving bright and early Thursday morning. So I won't be with you Thursday and Friday the rest of the week. But and then also the only day Hadar could do it is Wednesday because she doesn't get out of school until um, 3.30 on every day except Wednesdays when she gets out at 2.15. So it just, you know, all the stars aligned. It was very Besherit that uh, Hadar could join me on Wednesday because at first I said, no, 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 I don't do interviews on Wednesday. I only do them on Thursdays. And then I went, oh, wait a minute. I'm not going to be here Thursday. So it all worked out beautifully. And she's just a kick and a hoot. And I'll start promoting her being on the interview portion of our show for Wednesday. So mark your calendars. Let's see what this little nine-year-old baker has to say. After all, I don't bake. So I have as much to learn as anybody. And I'm very excited uh, to have her on the show. So spread the word. And I'm going to put it up in story on, I don't know what day, Wednesday, I guess. And we'll be in good shape. So let's start the fish. So this is the part that I really am sad about, which is normally I like to cook my fish outside, as you know, but my new outdoor kitchen is torn up yet again. Not yet again, but you know, it's been a, it's been a whole thing. You know, there's been a whole thing building in Las Vegas. We all know what that's like. We all know what this city is like, like that. So anyway, needless to say, we're gonna turn this on. They tell me it should be back together by next week, which is great. So I am biting the bullet, and I'm going to make this fish inside and hope that my mother-in-law doesn't knock on the door and say, oh, fried fish last night. Remember that Glade commercial? Anyway, my mother-in-law would never do that. She's too sweet, but I'm just saying. Reminds me of that commercial. I hate that smell of fish in the house. It's so hard to get rid of. And I'm going to heat this up really hot. And I'm going to take the meat side, the meat side of this fish, and I'm going to lay it on that hot grill, and then we're not going to touch it. Because if you touch it, that's when you run into trouble. That's when um, you lose the meat and it sticks to the pan. These are three very beautiful halibut fillets, and um, we're going to top them with this fabulous mixture, and it's going to be great. Oh, I hate when it gets in my hair. I mean, if it gets in my hair, I would die. But I guess it will, right? Because there's no hood. So it either gets in the hood over there on the stove. And the vents smell like fish, even though it, it's all gone in the house. But every time I stick my head under the vent, I can smell it. Or it's going to get in my hair. You are right about that. But anyway, maybe I'll pull it back and keep it out of the way, huh? and see what happens. I'm going to tuck it into the back of my shirt here. And there you go. Let's see what happens. All right. Let me get a spatula. And let's see if we can make this happen. So I'm going to tell Tom and Russell to come downstairs because if I'm cooking the fish now, it's going to be done and ready to roll. And uh, I think everybody's hungry anyway. I know I am. So, so Friday night, um, we went to a gala, the first gala ever. It was at the Cosmopolitan. I couldn't believe it. And we were not sure what to expect. I mean, just putting high heels on for the first time in 15 months or 13 months was enough for me to like, I was almost protesting getting dressed up, which I love to get dressed up. So I couldn't believe it. Learning to walk in high heels again after 13 months, I don't think I've ever gone 13 months without wearing high heels since I started wearing them. And we went to this Hidden Heroes Gala. So the Hidden Heroes are the people that work in the back rooms of all of the detective and investigative work at the police department. So these are the legitimate CSI. There we go, it's starting to sing. CSI and the custody lockup, meaning, um, you know, those that take care of uh, the items put in custody. So the weapons found or the drugs found or the um, uh, money, right, 
sometimes they, they arrest a, a drug cartel member and then they have to put the money in lockup because they find hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash. So I'm gonna just ban the smoke here. And so these, there were 225 of them in the room and they, it just was wonderful to see them be acknowledged for the work they do to help the police department. And they asked if I would do a, an auction item, a live auction item. And the live auction item was to take about 12 to 15 at-risk youth and um, teach them where food comes from, maybe take them out into to a farm or a farm garden somewhere here in the valley, have them have an immersive experience of pulling out the rosemary and the basil and the thyme or whatever it is that they need to experience to understand food better and where it comes from, and then take them to a test kitchen and give all of them the opportunity to learn to cook and to see that food comes from someplace other than uh, uh, a bag or a drive through And that when it comes to their health, teaching them how to cook, teaching them the basics, like how to read a recipe, is life-changing and transformational. And so the person who bid on this immersive experience for these young at-risk youth was not getting anything out of it except the fulfillment and the excitement of actually winning the high bid for this experience. And I, when they asked me to do it, I was certainly happy to do it, but I wanted to do it in a way that I knew would bring the most money to the organization. So I said, listen, I will do it, but ask Sheriff Joe Lombardo if he will be a part of this immersive experience. If he and I together will teach these kids how to cook. And if he doesn't know how to cook, how great is that? that he would be willing to stand there and be honest enough with these kids to say, I don't know how to cook. I don't know how to, you know, what do you mean a little tea is a teaspoon and a big tea is a tablespoon, which makes it, whoo, <clears throat> which makes it quite lovely. So we did it and we just got the final numbers. Uh, we were there and believe it or not, we were shocked when the auction item went to $10,000, which was, oh, this didn't stick at all. Look at this. This is fantastic. Oh, I think I'm just going to leave it there and just let it get, let's see, almost as exciting as being in a live auction as seeing that this didn't stick and that it's doing well. Okay. All right. Let's just give it a few minutes. In fact, let me, ah, oh, where did the top go? Let's see. Hold on. Oh my gosh. I took the top off. Where do you suppose I put that? Mm. There is a glass top that goes on here. Let me find this. Goodness gracious. Okay, now I have to fake it. Give me a second to fake it. I'll just put that right over the top. That'll do for now. We'll let that keep going, keep the smoke going. Anyway, um, yes, it's a perfect outreach experience for the sheriff and it also gives him an opportunity to be vulnerable and to show himself for real, because I'm sure that if he does cook, maybe he barbecues, I, I don't know. I see him out eating a lot, but I don't see him cooking. And so anyway, we thought it went up to $10,000 and we were celebrating how fantastic it was because these money go to the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Foundation. And the foundation pays for things for our, um, uh, for our, uh, emergency workers, police, fire, etc., cetera, that uh, they can't get. So sometimes they're short on bulletproof vests and the county just doesn't have anything left in the budget to buy these bulletproof vests for them. And right now the foundation is building a uh, practice facility out in North Las Vegas. And this practice facility is not just for the police department. They are going to run drills with fire, um, with, uh, I can't think of what else there is. There's fire, police, I know I'm forgetting uh, another service group, but it, it is just fantastic what the foundation does. So this money was going to help the foundation, to help our emergency workers and our police department. So 
um, it, it really was a, a worthwhile experience. And to think that what we were able to do is get 15,000 new unfound dollars contributed and that it's going to help at-risk youth to pull together a community um, joint venture between the sheriff and them to see that you know police are not out there just to hurt them, but to serve them it is really quite good. So I was really excited about that, so excited. And we're gonna do it, somebody said when, and I didn't know, but I just heard today, June. So there we go, look at that. So there was a little bit of sticking, but the good news is, is that if the skin sticks after we've turned it, look at that, look how nice and golden that is. Do you guys see that? Look at that, isn't that beautiful? That's great. So if the skin sticks from this point, then we just take the filet and loosen it right from the skin and the filet comes out just all on its own. And so that looks great. So let's take a minute here and let's chop up the rest of the basil. There we go. And it, I don't think it got in my hair, but I'll have Tom smell it a, a little bit later and say, does my hair smell like fish? I'm sure he'll be thrilled to let me know. <laughs> okay, so let's take the basil. Oh my gosh, when that fish cooks, it smells so sweet and so delicious. It's just absolutely fantastic. And I have to tell you, I was really seriously thinking about having to come back on the air here and tell all of you that I cannot put up with Facebook changing their algorithms and their platform on me anymore, and that I was going to move everything to IGTV on Instagram. And I didn't know how you guys would feel about that. But now I don't have to say it. But if I did say it, what do you think about that? All of you, I think, are on Instagram. Do you think everybody would lose me and not know where to find me? I don't know. Tell me what you think about that. So we're rolling this like a cigar. Just roll it right over. There we go. You see that? There we go. And we're just going to go ahead. There we go. So we're going to a wedding in Park City, Utah. Give Tom a little bit of basil there. And we're going to use this to sprinkle right on top. And I'm very excited about it. And it's a formal wedding. So, yep. So Tom says he smells it from upstairs in my office. So I'm hoping it's, it, it smells good. So, Tom, we're going to eat dinner right when I get off the air because I decided that for my gatherers, I actually really needed to not just show them prep, but I needed to show them um, how to cook it because fish can be so, you know, it could be dangerous to cook. Not dangerous, but because of the smell and the sticking to the pan. And this is, um, this is the Staub uh, cast iron pan. It is coated. It's the coated cast iron. And it has the grill uh, marks in it. I don't know if you can see that. I'll just take this off a minute. Whoop, there we go. But if you can see the um, the grill, the raised grill marks, I don't know what that's actually called right now. I don't know. Sometimes on a Monday, I can't think. Um, so uh, anyway, it's a great pan. I cook with it all the time with fish. And it's a great uh, griddle for on top of your, the stovetop when you have something like this fish and you really don't want to take it outside and put it on your bigger grill. But you want those beautiful, look at these beautiful grill marks. Let me get this just a little bit closer so that you can see it. So I'm going to just make a great green salad here. Look at how beautifully. Can you see that? Is that beautiful? Look at that. There you go. Okay, finally got the shot, guys. Finally got the shot. There you go. So at this point, I think I'm going to turn it off and let it finish steaming. And I think that's what was really great about this pan when I bought it is that it's meant to also be a steamer because all of the juices and the water get down into those grooves and it begins to steam. So at the very beginning, we've got that hot oil, that hot olive oil, and it is just absolutely fantastic. Um, and then it, it puts these grill marks and it starts to grill really, really deep. And then as the waters come out of the fish, 
and it gets in the grooves. Now it's steaming, so it's a grill steam pan, and I find that technique to be absolutely fantabulous. So I'm just going to take a minute and pull off just a few more of these basil leaves. These basils come straight out of um, Nanny Bubby's garden. I just clipped them just a few minutes ago. I was wanting to bring the kids here and thought it would make a great um, immersive experience for them to come and see the garden here and chop their own rosemary and chop their own thyme and basil and oregano and all kinds of different things that we thought that maybe uh, would go great, but I, it just, we'd have to still drive to the test kitchen where they could all learn and have places to do everything. So anyway, we will, we will definitely figure it out. So, okay, we're shipping on the rest of the basil. And now I have turned that off. But before I go and before I plate this, I just want to show you some of these really cool, cool flavors. Because I think you all seem so very interested in the, um, in the Temecula olive oil. So I'll be right back. I just want to pull a few of these out for all of you to see. There is the fresh jalapeno, vanilla fig, um, fresh grapefruit, there's lemon, there's fresh lime. So let's see, I want to get these over to all of you. And here's the hatch chili. I just don't want to drop them. Okay, here I come. So I, I just, these are finishing oils and or cooking oils. They're salad oils and vinegar. It just, and I love going into their little store in Laguna. I've taken you all there with me and it's just fantastic. So this is the fresh lime olive oil. I have not opened this yet. This is the vanilla and fig. This is uh, balsamic, which I love this so much. This is the hatch chili vinegar which, believe it or not, goes really fantastic with this fresh jalapeno olive oil. It makes just such a delicious salad, very good salad. It's just not as spicy as you would think. But if you want to cut it just a little bit, just put the fresh grapefruit in there with the hatch chili or with the uh, lime. The hat Whoa, there we go. <laughs> uh, or with the fresh lime. So there you go. These are just some of the flavors. And certainly with the pomegranate, I mean, the fresh grapefruit with the pomegranate, um, fresh grapefruit uh, with the hatch chili, pomegranate with the lime, or even the jalapeno. I think the pomegranate with the jalapeno would be absolutely fantastic. So these are just some of the oils that are there. Okay, so as to not have this overcook and have a tough halibut filet, let me grab a... Um, a plate and let's let's see how this looks and I'm gonna yell time for dinner it's time for dinner with nanny bubby okay let me take this there we go now remember we have taken and we have placed um, two tablespoons of the salsa in here which is just gonna just ramps up that flavor just amps it up just a little bit and let me just take this smaller filet right here. And the skin came off with it. This is so juicy and beautiful. And we're going to take this and just put it right over the top. Just like that. Just take maybe a little bit of these juices. There we go. And just pour some of the juices right on top like that. The olive oil and the pomegranate vinegar. There we go, right on top. We're gonna sprinkle a little bit of the basil. There we go. And maybe just stick my hand right into these toasted pine nuts again and just right over the top. So let's turn that around. How does that look, everybody? I think it looks gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. This has just made me so happy. There we go, everybody. So that's it. Tom, Russell, come on down. Dinner's ready. I just wanted to um, let you all know that today's recipe is actually already posted over in the Gather group 
So if you, um, thank you. If you want to go over there and just look at the recipe, you can. It will be there. It will live there. So you can come back to it anytime you feel like doing it. Um, I would take a bite, but have to take a picture. <laughs> but as soon as I take that picture, I'm going to take a bite. I promise you. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Tomorrow we're making gnocchi. We're making that lemon mascarpone gnocchi. So make sure lemon and thyme mascarpone um, gnocchi. And then Wednesday, Hadar Kadem is joining us, and we're going to let this nine-year-old baker tell us how to bake because. I could use some pointers. Not my favorite thing. Thank you so much. And remember, on the count of three, one, two, three, go out and spread love like butter. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Bye.